Gordon Sage. And I'm Andrew Smith. I have a couple of the names for you right now. You do? Yeah. Come on, man. Be They're nice. not very nice. I've been nice to you. Yeah, all right. All right, what are we talking about here today? We're going to talk about a, uh, a topic that you've got an opinion on. I, you have an opinion on I have an opinion topic. on just about everything. Uh, but we've had a few questions come in on what's our opinion of backup offers yeah. on short sales and do we want to rank them? So for instance, if we if we have an accepted offer, which we know we can only accept one offer on the Rank them like figure skaters? Eight, yeah. Seven. Exactly. So they say, well, five. if we get another offer, should we go, you know, backup offer one, backup offer two, and accept these offers and put them into a set position? And uh, what's our opinion? What is well, our opinion? Our, here's my opinion. Our opinion. I'll take ownership to this. Here's how I see it, and here's how I explain it to the buyer's agents that are submitting offers on any of the short sale listings that I have, is that the buyer in first position, those of you that haven't been to Disneyland or Disney World, they have this ride called It's a Small World. Dun, 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 dun. You go to a little circle, right, on this little boat. So the buyer in first position, that would be the buyer that has the seller execute the contract, and that contract with earnest money deposit and all the other proof of funds and everything goes off to the bank right, for review and hopefully acceptance. Okay. Everyone else that writes an offer after that point in time is now in a backup position. So they're in line for It's a Small World. Right. Person in first position is writing It's a Small World. People in backup position are all in a big huddle waiting. Why can't we ride Space Mountain? No, you like definitely that? can't because It's a Small World is so much okay. cooler. There's so much culture there. All right. Um, so what happens is, is that everyone else in backup position is equally in backup position. That's how I see it. So what, what we do is we update the buyer's agent every week and we update the backup offers every week or sometimes every two weeks if there's no news that, that's gone on. If the buyer in the first position falls out, walks away, passes away, whatever happens to that buyer in the first position, then we go back to the buyers in backup position and we notify all the agents at the same time. Buyer could not perform or something happened with the buyer, buyer fell out, however you want to word it. Is your buyer still interested in this property? You have 24 hours to respond to this. Give us your highest and best offer at that point in time. Then we sit down with the homeowner and we show them all the offers again and say, here's these five or six offers. Which one do you think suits your needs best? And that's right. a real nice way of putting it. Usually I go in and say, this is offer A, B, C, and D. This is what this offers. This is what this offers. You need to pick one and pick the one that you think is going to stick in there. Right. I mean, they're going to ask for your opinion and your guidance, which is fine. The, the problem that you get into is if you turn around the other way, and now I'm going to turn this around from a buyer's agent's perspective right. Right here, and I'm going to ask you why, if you were a buyer's agent, would you want to write an offer that's on a house that's already got an accepted offer to be in backup position number one, with the idea that these people may or may not ever get this property? We got a, a speedway going on outside. That's pretty yeah, awesome. Well, and why why would we do that? Well, you know, as I explained it in the class last week, it's like. If, why would you try to get engaged to someone that's already engaged? Already married even. Or already married, okay? So, and I'm sure everyone can relate to this, the yeah. situation where you, you, you meet somebody, you, you're really attracted to them, and then you're like, you're gonna wait in line? I don't know many people that really wait in line, but you know, some, some might. Why would you get that buyer emotionally attached to a piece of property that and they may never get. That they, yeah, that they, that they may never get. So the way that I like to explain it to the buyers is this. If you'd like to be in backup position, that's fine. What I suggest doing is just a letter of intent. Why go through all the paperwork um, and all that time, which then takes that buyer and emotionally sets them even deeper into possibly getting that property, when well, we can just do a letter of intent, send it off to the agent, let them know if anything falls out, here's what my offer would be, please keep us in the loop. Again, it's managing expectations. And from a buyer's agent perspective, I honestly believe you're doing a disservice to your buyer if you tell them anything other than what is actually going on. That house has an accepted offer. It's no different than an offer or a house quote unquote being pending in your MLS and then a buyer falls out during the inspection period and it comes back active. Yep. It's a property that you may want to watch, keep an eye on, or like Troy said, put a letter of intent in. But if the buyer gets emotionally attached to that house, the chances of them finding something else and actually moving on diminishes because now what they're going to do is every other house that they see, they're going to compare back to every that house. single one. So when they see a Mercedes, now everything's a Pinto from there on out. As a matter of fact, a 1972 Pinto. And that's what happens. That's exactly what happens. These buyers get all excited and they go, this is the house I have to have this. And you can show them a model match two lots down and the lot doesn't have the, the, the same view. 
No, it's twisted slightly, or there's something different. It's the, twisted. Uh, twisted. So the idea is you definitely want to keep the buyer engaged, and it's not to say that that won't happen for that property, but in the situation where we are, and I know people say, yeah, the buyer fallout is high. Well, you know, it can be and it can't be. I really, again, depends on who that listing agent is and what they're That's right. And go back to the video that we already shot here about buyers and keeping buyers engaged. Buyers shouldn't be falling out like they are. No. This is a great market and a great time to buy. And I'm not trying to do an NAR commercial, okay? I'm not trying to pull any wool over anyone's eyes. It's a great time to buy. Rates are low. Homes are absolutely affordable. As a matter of fact, in our particular market, we are still in the seller's market. Every property that gets listed, if it's priced right and in decent shape, or really, if it's priced right, it's going to have multiple offers in the first two weeks. Yeah, it sells right away. Done. You know, so in that particular case, I mean, if those buyers, again, what's the buyer's motivation? If they are truly ready, willing, and able buyers, I don't think they want to stand on the sideline. You know, as you know, I coach soccer. You do? I coach youth soccer. The last thing in the world is you, you, you get a, okay, you get a, don't even go there. You get a player and you've got him on the sidelines. He's all dressed in his uniform. Coach, can I play? Yeah, just hang on. Coach, can I play? And you just keep him on the sideline. And all of, a sudden, all of a sudden the game's over. No, I don't do that. Okay. But I'm just saying it's the same thing. You've got these buyers that they're ready, willing, and able to go. And you're holding them on the sidelines, not letting them participate. And they could end up missing out on some other opportunities. Not only that, they might want to be traded to another team, meaning go to another agent that's going to actually show them a property and get them an escrow and get, get them to their destination. Exactly. It's, it's a situation of uh, keeping those buyers engaged and doing what's in their best interest. Now, obviously, every situation is going to be different, but talk this through with your buyers. Let them know what it means to be in backup position and what the likelihood is. And they're basically taking themselves out of the game. Yeah. And uh, you know, we don't think it's something that we, uh, you should do. But we'd like your feedback on it. We'd like to know how you handle it and if you've had some other situations. Find us at www.s2neg.com. Catch you next time. Thanks for stopping by.